Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host for the show, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, during our first segment, we were talking a little bit about um, taking the longer view of, of investing and how um, using the analogy of the, some of the original stock companies which were around the exploration of America and China and how if you diversified across different ships and didn't put all your money into one ship, you probably made out a lot better um, on average, and we feel the same way. Before, we're going to talk a little bit more about long-term investing and, and how to deal with the volatility that's going on in the markets in a minute. But I don't want to let the show go by without um, giving our take on President Obama's uh, new jobs bill. And for whatever it's worth, uh, you know, we think the, the jobs bill is sort of more of the same. I mean, there's nothing really new in there. It talks about, um, you know, continuing the payroll tax holiday uh, in a significant step, extending that payroll tax holiday to the employers. And for those of you that may not know, the payroll tax holiday, normally uh, the payroll tax is 6.2% uh, um, Medicare, or Social Security, excuse me, and 1.45% Medicare for a total of 15.3% split between the employee and the employer. So the employer pays 7.65, the employer pays 7.65. Well, as part of the jobs bill last year, uh, President Obama cut the 6.2% Social Security and Medicare tax for the employees down to 4.2%. And so as part of the jobs bill, uh, they're proposing to continue that and actually extend, uh, increase it a little bit, as well as extend this to the employers, which not included in the first jobs bill. He talks about you know, infrastructure and things like that. And, you know, we've had literally trillions of dollars spent under these same auspices, the stimulus spending on infrastructure and the $800 making work pay credit, which was the first iteration of essentially refunding people small little money. And my contention is that it's that this money is not getting to where it needs to go. Um, that most of it is wasted. If you go back, I was listening to something talking about the anniversary of the terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001, and they talked about, if you remember, there was sort of a frenzy of spending on homeland security. I mean, homeland security was the buzzword, and if you were spending money on homeland security, well, it, it didn't matter. I mean, that money was just thrown at homeland security. Kind of the same thing now is, you know, if you attach the word jobs to it, people are just throwing billions of dollars to it. Well, in the, in the forthcoming years after September 11th, what they found was a lot of this homeland spending um, was frankly wasted. Uh, that, you know, people were purchasing equipment they didn't need. Um, it was just a lot of it was wasted. It was not getting to the right hands, a lot of administrative overhead. And you see the same thing with the stimulus of the federal government. And so the numbers are big, but the impact is very, very small. And I would contend that they need some type of, uh, if you remember the invasion of Iraq, the shock and awe. Well, we need some sort of shock and awe to get this economy moving. And I think a lot of it can be accomplished at low tax um, or low impact is just some sort of, you know, philosophical changes. For example, you know, we're not going to punish companies. We're encourage companies to come to the United States um, and pay taxes here. We're going to make it a good place for companies to do business. We're going to wipe out a bunch of red tape. We're going to take off regulations um, that, that are inhibiting businesses from hiring people. Businesses have tons of money out there today, and this, this proposal that was put out is not going to encourage uh, people to hire people. If you look at the impact on a single employer, a single employee, um, the dollar amounts just aren't there, as well as there's a, something in the back of every business owner's head that this is temporary. Um, anyway, enough on that. I wanted to talk about two other things in part of his proposals. Number one was the uh, the president proposed capping the amount of interest from municipal bonds that 
investors can exclude from their taxable income. Once again, targeting those as a family that make over 250000 a year and individuals making over 200000 per year. Uh, currently, investors, if they put their money in municipal bonds, municipals being uh, state and local authorities, um, in uh, you know Craven County bonds or you know the state of North Carolina bonds or hospital bonds those the interest you earn on those is free from federal taxation and of course any impact that the federal government makes on these municipal bonds taxation is going to have a direct impact on the ability of cities counties states to obtain financing from the public markets uh, I'm not convinced that this is such a great idea at this point. The municipal bond uh, market is somewhere around $2.9 trillion, um, and these investors give money to state, local government. They accept a lower return because they know that part of that return is going to be tax exempt. And so when they're looking at where to put their money, either state, local government, or you know a corporation, or even the federal government, you know, they look at, well, I can accept a lower rate from North Carolina on this bond, but I get it tax-free, so after tax, I'll make out okay. If they eliminate that tax deduction, the borrowing cost for state, local municipalities is going to increase. We're coming up on our next break. When I come back, we'll continue our discussion a little bit about some of the tax impacts of the new jobs bill. So for All Things Money, I'm your host, David Blaine, and we'll be right back after a few short messages.